The cameras that we carry around all the time, whether it's a cell phone or a small point and shoot cameras, are incredible tools that we can really utilize to create great video. But I find so many people make the same mistakes when using these tools. So today I wanted to create a video that was five tips to get better video from your small camera. So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna be using primarily an iPhone XS as my camera that I wanted to talk a little bit about, but all the principles that I'm gonna share in this video can be used on any camera. It doesn't matter whether you have an iPhone, an Android, a point and shoot, an actual full size camera, it doesn't matter. The principles are the same and that's really what I wanted to dive into. So the first thing I noticed that happens all the time when people are creating great video for themselves is that they forget to look at the lens and not the screen that is actually showing them what they're seeing and they're thinking that they're looking at themselves and they're trying to create video and talk to the camera, but they're forgetting to look at the lens. This is the lens that I'm looking at. This is right next to it, the actual screen of what I'm seeing. This look isn't good. It doesn't look like you're connecting whatsoever with your audience. And it's important to remember that whether you're using a cell phone, there's always a camera you need to focus your attention on. This is the camera and this is the actual viewfinder. Make sure you're looking at the camera. The same thing goes for a bigger camera. If you have a screen that flips out, it's very easy to focus your eyes on the side screen or notice the top screen that's actually what you're filming. But you wanna make sure that you keep your connection on the lens. You wanna make sure that you make eye contact with your viewer, and this is a super easy fix. But next time you go to shoot video, especially with your cell phone, Make sure you look into the lens. Looking into the lens is so much better. Tip number two that's a very simple one, it doesn't matter what camera you're using, this is important, is to just utilize light to your advantage and don't let it be your backlight. Because when you have light as your backdrop, you may think that you have a really great view behind you. The problem is your camera is gonna expose to that light behind you and it's gonna make you look really dark. Or if you expose to yourself, it's gonna make the background look really bright. Both of those don't look very good. A lot of people like to go against a window or something that they think has a really nice backdrop and the problem is, as you see in this example, without me even trying to make this happen, the camera doesn't necessarily know what to expose at. As you turn around and as you change things, it either is gonna do one of two things. It's gonna keep me as the shot and the background is gonna be pretty blown out or it's gonna do the opposite and it's gonna expose the background and it's gonna make me dark. Both are not good looks at all. The only way to truly fix this is you have to light yourself so that it matches the exposure of the backgrounds. Most people don't have that lighting, so here's a better tip that I can give you. What you should do instead is flip around and utilize the light source in any way that you can, because whether it's natural light, whether it's a lamp, whatever it is, the more that you can use light sources to the front and side of your actual camera, the better quality you'll get from the camera because it's not having to try to create proper exposure without good lighting. Another thing you can do for a little bit of a different look is to have the window source or the light source at a little bit of a different angle than straight on. And that way, instead of it being just a completely lit scene, what you can do instead is have it be a little bit brighter on one side of your face and a little bit darker on the other. This will give you just a more dramatic look to it. And it really is easy to achieve if you have a light source. Don't always just let the light source be behind the camera straight on. Change it and look at different angles and see what your backdrops look like and determine the best way to light it. But the more you can have the light on this side of the camera, it's much better than behind you. Tip number two and a half is kind of a half a tip because it's not necessarily the way that you have to shoot everything, but you should keep these things in mind. As much as you can when you're filming with your phone, make sure that you turn the phone sideways. A 16 by nine image is your standard look that you get from a video like this, and it looks better in most situations. There's obviously things like Instagram stories and Snapchat and YouTube stories and all these different platforms where we obviously have become accustomed to shooting with a vertical phone instead, and that's completely fine for those platforms, but when you're shooting video for yourself that's not going directly to those platforms, it's really useful if you can turn the phone a little bit because it's gonna fill people's screens more when you watch it on a TV or a computer or something that has a natural screen size, it's gonna look much better than when it's only taking up a little bit of the screen. No one likes watching a video on a big screen like this, so don't do it, people. Tip number three is exposure lock, and this one is huge, especially when you talk about some of those lighting situations that we just talked about. Exposure lock simply says, don't change anything else on exposure, meaning your actual light that is coming from the camera. Keep everything consistent for the rest of the time that I record until I tap it 
to reset the exposure. Now the reason that's super important is because there are times that lighting will change or the camera will try to adjust during a shot. And if you're creating videos like this where you're talking to a camera for an extended period of time, it's important that the lighting stays the same because then it doesn't distract the viewer. So sure, the lighting in your office or your room where you're shooting may change a little bit here and there, but you don't want your camera to be adjusting on the wrong thing. Especially if you have a light behind you or there's a light to the side of you, you wanna make sure that it stays consistent. And this is really easy to achieve. Once you get the brightness what you want, it's important to lock that exposure. I'm gonna look at the screen again now so I can see what I'm actually doing, but if I tap and hold on my face, you can see that it says AE lock. That basically means exposure is locked. So no matter where I point it now, it's not gonna change the exposure of what I actually set. Now that's super important because if I'm talking to the camera and adjusting a little bit, I don't want it to obviously adjust to the light source back there or adjust to anything else. I want it to keep consistent with what I'm actually doing. It's super important to lock the exposure when you're actually filming on the phone so that it doesn't keep adjusting. So remember, tap on the subject that you want, slide up and down to get the exposure how you want, and then hold down if you're using an iPhone and you'll see it says AE lock. Now start filming. Tip number four is unbelievably important. I think a lot of people don't even actually realize the importance of this. Whenever you can, you should be trying to use the rear facing camera, especially on an iPhone, but any phone for that matter. It is important to use the best camera that you have. The front facing camera on all these phones is not even close to the same quality of your rear facing camera. So when you want the best picture quality, it's important to use this camera as often as you can and only use the front facing camera if you have to. It may sound like a little bit more of a complicated issue because you obviously can't see yourself when you turn it this way. But if you're setting up a shot and you want to talk to the camera a bit and you you know have your set there and you're and you're able to set it on a tripod, as much as you can try to put someone in that seat and get the exposure set, do that AE lock and use this will be a humongous difference in terms of video quality. So this is the front facing camera on the iPhone XS with plenty of light and just as good as you could get in terms of lighting. And this is the rear facing camera on the iPhone XS, exactly the same situation, the same lighting and you can see just what a huge difference it is in terms of video quality. It also uses a different microphone setup and everything, so a lot of factors go into this. Now, I can't see what I'm filming, but the whole point being, you could set this up on a tripod pretty quickly, or just hold the camera and point it roughly at yourself, and it's pretty easy to get yourself in the shot. But difference in video quality is definitely worth it. And tip number five, one of the absolute best ways to greatly improve your video quality, no matter what camera you're using, is to simply improve your audio device. This may sound really complicated for a lot of you, but it is so easy to sync external audio like a lav mic to any device you're using, whether it's an iPhone, whether it's a larger camera, it doesn't matter. All these small portable cameras that we carry around now have incredible video, but audio is not their strong suit. And when you want to really connect with people on a camera and make sure that they want to continue to watch what you're doing, Audio is unbelievably important to do that. And having a simple setup like this, where I'll put the links below to a Tascam DR10L, can give you greatly improved audio. And then regardless of what camera you're using, your audio stays consistent. And the best way to improve your image quality and your video quality is to improve your audio. Audio is something that is overlooked so often because of the fact that we think that we have a great camera, that that's all there is to it but you'd be shocked how many videos you watch and you determine whether or not they're easy to watch or the video quality or production quality of it is good based on audio. Audio plays a huge factor into whether people want to keep watching your videos. It has to sound good no matter how good it actually looks. And the great thing about external audio sources similar to the Tascam setup that I'm using right now is the fact that it can stay consistent no matter what camera you're using. So even if you sometimes shoot with a bigger camera and sometimes shoot with a phone and sometimes shoot with a point and shoot camera, having a great external audio source will allow you to get good consistent audio and will make all your videos sound so much better. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you are new around here, I would love for you to subscribe and just hang out a little bit more. It is my goal as much as possible with this channel to educate on the topic of video production and whether you're an entrepreneur or a business owner or someone that's just looking to get better video in general it's always my goal to help as much as i possibly can so hit subscribe hang out comment below tell me you're new around here would love to know what you do and how i can help you more 
Thanks for watching as always. Talk to you guys real soon.